Welcome to this Way to Fire YouTube video. Today it's me, Andy, and I will be playing the solo fantasy war game stroke RPG Five Leagues from the Borderlands. This is another game by Nordic Weasel Games, who also produce Five Parsecs from Home. So if you've seen some of our other videos, you'll see we're a big fan of that science fiction version, and this is their sort of dark, gritty fantasy version of the same sort of thing. This is their second edition. You can get it from War Games Vault as a downloadable PDF for about $15, I think it is, um, which is pretty reasonable considering it's 150 pages of A4. So printing it off is a fair chunk as well. Um, hopefully one day it will get picked up by someone and sold as an actual uh, book version as Modifius picked up the five parsecs uh, science fiction version. But anyway, I will be playing the uh, this version here. And it follows a very similar sort of theme to Five Parsecs. You have um, a hero, in fact in this case you have a team of heroes, four heroes in my case, and then the rest of the group is up to eight models. Um, it's set in you know, an open world sort of fantasy setting where you can make it more or less gritty or more or less high fantasy, depending on what you want, there's a few rules for that. But the basic idea is that you are a band of warriors defending areas and villages uh, from the depredations of outlaws and monsters and the undead and whatever. So um, my crew are here. This is the Brotherhood of the Blade. Rather dramatic name for a bunch of clowns really. But uh, they are led by Trion of Hanadon there in the red cloak. Um, it's relatively basic really. It doesn't have quite as fleshed out a background as the five parsecs guys do. Um, we then have his retainer friend, Alderic, who is the one with the axe on the left. Uh, Big John of Granny Vale. He's the guy in the red armour. He is, um, he's got an unusual background in that he's very large. So he's got a better toughness. Um, can't wear armour that isn't specifically made for him. And I've given him uh, full armour, helmet and shield. So he's the most sort of tooled up of my guys. And then I have Han, who has the bow there. And then amongst them, we also have some sort of guys to fill out the basics, uh, essentially. So on the far left at the back there with a white cap, we've got Old Helm. Then we have, next to him, we have uh, Kieran, the suckling kid, who's the youth of the uh, group. He's a hopeful youth. So that's a sort of interesting thing. He's a Pathfinder as well, so he can prevent ambushes and stuff like that if I come up against anything. Then we've got um, Silas the Strange with the Flail and Ranulf, uh, who has a sling on the far right. And what I am doing is, you normally do a campaign setting. I'm, I'm not doing that for this person because it's my first mission. So I basically moved to a region called the Darkling Vale which I've put in the hinterlands. You can have the hinterlands, the uh, borderlands, and beyond the something or other, I can't remember. And then you roll for how many villages you have there. So I've got three villages I'm trying to defend. Harmstadt, Fleischem, and Knutzen. Um, Harmstadt is where I am defending at the moment. And then we have rolled to see how much tension there is in the area from the three different types of um, sort of groups of uh, opponents really so there are outlaws borders and dark secrets so i have a tension at the moment of two for the outlaws two for borders and five for dark secrets and that meant that i ended up coming across a dark secrets um enemy for my first mission i first popped to the village had a little look around the support, the locals were quite supportive in Harmstead, so I was able to train, gain an experience point for Trian. Alderic, he studied in the library but found nothing of note. And the suckling went looking for herbs, but was also unsuccessful. I then rolled to see what I um, would come against as I went adventuring. And I found that I had a combat encounter, which is what I want, because that's the way of produce, reducing threat um, against... And I rolled on a separate table for the Dark Secrets because they're the most powerful one in my region. And located a camp of five fanatics, which also includes an additional captain. And one of those fanatics is an archer. So I'm facing off against six 
Fanatics, which in my case, you'll see in a moment, I'm using some of the uh, Frostgrave Knolls as my Fanatics. Um, yeah, and we'll see how this goes along. So I'm hoping for good things on this. Uh, the mechanics you'll see are very similar, so if you watch the five passes ones, basically you activate in a quick turn based on agility, which is the same as reaction for five, five parsecs. Then you do um, those who are moving fast go in the quick phase, then you do the uh, enemy phase, and then everyone else goes in the slow phase. And there's a final phase for monsters and undead if you were facing any, we're not facing any today. Um, yeah, that's it really. We'll get on with the game. So here is the battlefield set up. It's a camp I have attacked. So the way you deploy in a camp, rather than being opposite each other, um, a third of the troops, including the captain, are in the centre, and then the other model, the other two thirds, are randomly determined around a table. So you can see fanatics in a few different places. And then I can choose where I get to go. So I've put Theon and uh, Alaric over here. I've put my archer, the suckling, and old helm over here. And then over here, I have put um, I've put Big John, my slinger, and Silas. So I'm hoping to get some early activations to take out one of these ones and then move everybody in. Rather than have me spread all over the table, um, I'm hoping to have them more bunched up together. So the way it works is I will now roll one dice for each model I have. So that's eight d6s. Anything that's less than their agility, which would be reaction in five parsecs, I will then get to uh, go. All my guys have got agilities of one and two. Um, if they get to go in a quick phase, then I can choose which models can go as long as they ha the dice I place next to them is less than or equal to their agility. Um, so hopefully I'll get two or three guys before the monsters. I might be able to do something useful. Then the monsters will move, and then I will get the rest of my gang. Um, for what I have to do is a... I don't have to do a move, but if I do a move, then I can only do a move first, and then the second action, either a combat action or a non-combat action. If I choose to... Uh, move, I can move twice, but only by dashing, and that will be a varying amount of dash depending on how much armor my guys are wearing. So some, like big John Granville, he can't dash because he's too heavily armored, and some of the others can only dash one inch or sometimes two inches. So not a huge benefit, but might get to get a little bit further if you're trying to chase across the field. Anyway, we'll come back in a second. So I actually got a spectacularly good... Uh, agility roll out of the eight dice I rolled six came up with twos and ones which is amazing so um, I'm going to put the two on John of Granville another one on Silas another one on my slinger whose name I've forgotten uh, so that they all get to act these are the two that I'm gonna act. theoretically I'm putting them on um, Theon and Alaric and then Han my archer old helm and the suckling are also going to act. The suckling and old helm aren't going to do much, but it's going to be able to keep up with Han, of course, protect him, because he. I want him to stay alive shooting his arrows, of course. So, uh, let's see what happens with this. Because yeah, it's the first time we're playing this, so the first round we'll do a bit of a walkthrough of things. So, I've got two actions. First one has to be a move, or if it doesn't want to be a move, then I just stand still. But I can't move, do another action, and then move. So, I've moved up uh, Ranoff, the slinger, uh, to get within six inches of this fanatic. The um, reason to do that is because within six inches, I need a three to hit him if he's in cover. So I then rolled a four, so I have hit him. In this game, you then compare against the armor that he's wearing. These guys are wearing no armor. So um, depending on the armor, you have to then exceed the value of the armor. Armor has No armor has a value of zero, so obviously I don't need to roll a dice because I will always exceed uh, zero. I then need to roll for harming him against his toughness. Now they have a toughness of four, so I roll this dice. Now I get a four, and that actually now means that uh, this fanatic has been has been wounded and stunned. So I'll just tell you what that means in a second. So actually, he's only wounded. So wounded from uh, the archery, and that means he gets this. Bop, a little wound next to him and um, basically by being wounded he can be wounded more than once um, there is a chance at the beginning 
uh, at the end, sorry, of every activation, that they will pass out from their wounds and therefore be removed. So that's a good start for my little guy here. I will then go on to the next of the guys. Next things I did was I moved up with Big John. Now he's got full armor on, so he couldn't dash, so he couldn't get close enough. So he can only move four inches. And then Silas the Strange, one of my followers, moved up next to him. He can dash because he doesn't wear any armor, but um, he still didn't get quite close enough. He needs to be within an inch to initiate combat, which is annoying. I'd quite like to have got in amongst that, but he's wounded. These guys are staying still, obviously. Uh, over here, Han fired a shot and actually managed to wound in the same way as uh, my last guy did with a sling. So with his short bow, he managed to shoot that one there. And then these two guys have just moved up, so that's... Uh, old Helm on the left, and uh, the Suckling on the right. Right, and now we'll move into the phase for uh, the monsters themselves, or the, the enemy. And then we'll come back and finish off with uh, Tian and Alaric. So those models that don't have uh, missile weapons are just moving towards the closest enemy. So this wounded one here, the other one's moving across the hill to cover his mate. Around the back there, we're moving forwards. The captain has moved down. He's a much better fighter, but doesn't move any faster. Uh, this wounded one, I rolled randomly to see which one he ended up fighting. He went for Big John. And then the archer has moved up as well. Now, in theory, I would have um, completed each of these actions before moving on to the next one, but I've just done this for ease. So what I'll do is I'll do the archer firing onto Silas the Strange, and then I'll do the combat between this one and Big John of Granville. So this archer failed to shoot Silas, and then we come on to the combat here with this wounded fanatic against Big John of Granville. So um, the way it works is you do three exchanges in a combat. So the attacker, in this case the fanatic, rolls a dice, he got a one, and adds his combat value of zero. And then the defender, in this case Big John, rolls his dice and adds his combat value of plus one. So Big John effectively becomes a two and wins the combat. Now, no, because Big John was defending, no damage is caused, but we now do the second exchange, whereas this time Big John is rolling with the initiative, so he could injure on this case. So again, let's look at those dice again. We get a one for the um, Fanatic, and three modified to four for Big John. So Big John strikes a blow. Now Big John rolls against the toughness of the, um, sorry, rolls against his armor, but they've got no armor, so ignore that. And then rolls against the toughness of the um, Fanatic, which is four. So I need to get a four or more, but Big John has a quality weapon and that quality weapon is a bastard sword. The bastard sword gives me plus one to defeating his toughness. So it's a hand and a half sword, some people might say, or zwei hander. Um, and so I need a three, actually, to take him down. So yes, I have hit him. I have exceeded his toughness. So unlike before where I wounded him, now that I've exceeded it, I have actually removed him as a casualty so that fanatic is gone so big john of granville actually he did very very well there managed to defeat that model um, but you can see how the sort of exchange is so combat it seems and you do a total of three of these um and at the end of the third one if there was no winner then they would break apart so unlike five passes where you just do a single attack, in this one it's a bit more involved in the combat, which sort of suits the fa fantasy element, of course. And now we move on to the slow activations, which is just these two, uh, Tian and Alaric. So they aren't going to do anything except move up, of course. And then when we come back, we will be starting uh, round two. One final thing at the end of each round, when an enemy has been killed, you test for the morale. So for each enemy killed, you roll a dice, and if it gets a one or a two, just a, I got one dice on a one, a model will flee the table from the enemy force, which is quite handy. Um, slight again, slightly different from five parsecs. 
Uh, it's always a one and a two. It doesn't matter who the guys are. I quite like in five par six where different um, enemies have a different chance of running. I guess we do have that in this game. Undead, for instance, will never break and neither will monsters. So it's, it is slightly different. But uh, I don't, it says the one closest to the player's table edge. So I'm going to choose this fella because it would make sense to me. He's quite close to my edge and he is wounded. So he's facing off against three and then he's just seen Theon and Alaric appear over there. So I think he would probably be the one who's most nervous. So we'll remove him. He will flee the battlefield and leaving us with just four fanatics left to deal with. Right. But one of them is a captain. So here we are in round two. In round two, my agility rolls weren't quite as good. I got three dice with ones. So Big John, I'm going to activate so he can move up to gain some cover by hiding behind that um, boxes. I'm going to activate uh, my slinger, Ranulf, and I'm going to activate Han to potentially try a shot over here onto the captain as well. And the rest will have to go in the slow reactions phase. So Han moved forward a little bit, did fire a shot down at that captain because of obstructions in the way he needed a six and he got it he then beat the armor but didn't beat the toughness so no damage was caused on the fanatics captain uh ran off missed with his uh, sling and um john of granville has moved up there to defend the barricade because the captain was an inch or so away um, what that means is that if I am defending the barricade, there's a 50-50 chance that I'll be the attacker in an exchange, which will give me an advantage because I could potentially injure him on the first go. So um, we'll now move over into the fanatics phase, the creature phase, and we'll see where we're at. So the archer missed, this other fanatic moved forwards, the fanatic over there moved forwards against my guys coming down the road, and then the captain move forwards frothing at the mouth raging against the injustice of being found caught napping in his camp he sees john of granville behind the barricade and leaps forth to slay him now we're pretty evenly matched and uh, let's see if john of granville has the advantage he does so john of granville will be the attacker despite the fact that he hasn't charged in um they're both rolling so john is going to be on the black dice the um Fanatic Captain will be on the white dice. They both have a combat of one. So um, we'll add one to this dice roll. Um, so it's a two and a one, which means that John of Granville gets to hit, which is great. Uh, I now need to roll against the armor. He has an armor of one. So as long as I beat a one, should be too bad. No, it's not. Now, the trick is here. He has a toughness of five. Now, I do have my bastard sword on John. So I need a four or more to do some sort of effect on him. Darn it. I got a three. So what that does is it stuns him. Doesn't do anything more interesting than that. So being stunned, the captain moves back a short amount, but he's still in the combat. He would give up initiative if he had it, but obviously he doesn't. Um, so the other downside is he's going to roll two dice now but pick the weakest of the two, the lowest result. So the combat continues in the second exchange. John still has the initiative. And this is massive. So you can see a six and a one modified up to a seven and a two for the uh, captain of the fanatics. But of course he picks the lower one. And John got a five modified up to a six. So John wins the second exchange as well. He now needs to beat the armor of one. He doesn't beat the armor of one. So um, if you don't beat the armor, you are also, I'm sorry, if you don't beat the armor, you, it's just deflected. And that stun goes off after one exchange. So now they're back for a final fight. John still has the advantage, or the initiative, I should say, but um, no longer is he picking the lowest dice for the Fnatic captain. So let's see what happens here. John has one again, a modified seven and six. So let's see if he can beat the armor this time. He does beat the armor. And I need a... He has a toughness of five, modified down to a four because my bastard sword. So a four or more to do something interesting. And I didn't do anything interesting, so he's stunned again. Moves back the inch, so he just stays as he is. A stunned. Um, and the combat comes to an end after those three exchanges. So John Granville has been doing very, very well with his fighting, it has to be said. Now I'll have the slow reaction, so I'll have the rest of my guys to do their stuff. So in my slow 
phase. Silas the Deranged has moved up to support Granville, John of Granville. Uh, Dian and Alaric just moved out again to head towards the captain. And uh, Old Helm and the Suckling actually stayed put. And the reason for that is that this guy, although I could have got into combat with him, he's on a hill. And being on a hill would give him the advantage over me. So actually, I gonna let Han have another go at shooting first before I deal with that. So that is the end of round three. No morale tests to... Oh, actually, no, there are, aren't there? Oh, no, no morale tests to be taken because no one was killed. One guy fled last turn, so still the four fanatics left. So I do outnumber them two to one, but hopefully we can uh, see how we get on and deal with at least the captain, I would hope, and that guy over on the hill. So at the start of round three, I got two uh, agility tests. So Han's going to try a shot at that fanatic on the hill. And John of Granville has been given the other one. He's going to leap over that barricade and into combat with the captain. Death or glory! So Han missed his shot over there, unfortunately. And now we roll for John of Granville versus the captain again. So similar to before, John has the initiative because he has gone into the combat. He is the attacker. And he wins again, the modified 6 of 5. So can he beat the armor? Yes. Can he beat the toughness on a 4 again? No, he doesn't. But he puts a stun onto uh, the captain. So uh, I didn't say about stuns. They don't have any effect outside of combat, so it disappeared the last turn. So he keeps the initiative, and we go again. Oh, of course, and there's two white dice. So you can see, because he's stunned... Uh, I picked the lower of those two, which is the two. And again, John wins that attack, or that exchange. I managed to beat the armor, because he's got an armor of one. And then, so can I roll to wound? Yes, finally, we roll to wound. So we take out the captain. Yes, I am pleased with that. That is a big hit. Uh, it will now be the monster phase, but now their captain's gone, they'll obviously be testing morale as well. There's no additional effect from the captain having gone but it, uh, by taking a model off obviously they'll be rolling at the moment one die so they might lose another model as well hopefully so the archer fired onto big john of granville managed to hit him and then rolled to see if he can defeat his armor and he has an armor of three for his heavy armor and an extra one for his shield only against missile weapons taking it to four and i rolled a three so it didn't get through his armor so there is no effect at all. From, there is no effect at all from the archery, but I can evade two inches if I want. So I'm actually going to move him over here two inches because that might take him out of the distance of this um, guy here. Let's see. Uh, they can move four so yeah just about get in i think but he'll gain the advantage for the uh terrain again so that might help him so we'll do that combat um so he gets to go first does old john of granville again john of granville uh, is on the black dice so that goes three to four and a five so there's a hit from the fanatic can he defeat the armor obviously the armor's quite tough uh, it equals the armor, so in melee, if you equal the armor, he's knocked back and stunned. So put the stun on him, oh, sorry, wobbly hands, put the stun on him, knock him back, and it gets the advantage for the uh, Fnatic in the second round. Uh, but, oh, that was a one and a one, but uh, of course, John Granville has got a combat of one, so that goes to a modified two, so he wins that exchange, but can't do any damage. So what he does is, because he was the defender, he can't um, hit back. So final round, final exchange, I should say. He can now be the attacker, and it's a four and a four, which means with the plus one combat, John will hit. Can he beat the one of the armor? Yes, he can. Can he beat the four of the toughness now? Because this is a normal um, fanatic, and that's actually down to a three because of my bastard sword. And yes, so he takes out a second one in the same round. Oh, John of Granville, you are the MVP. And of course, that stun marker disappears. Oh, it was interesting. So I 
I was stunned, wasn't uh, I? think I was stunned. So I should have rolled another attack, but yeah, okay, I still managed to win. Okay. This Fanatic's charged down from the hill to take on Old Helm. So it's going to be a straight up dice roll. Neither of them have got a combat dice. So black for Old Helm. Oh, Old Helm. Good man. So he manages to hit. Can he beat the armor of the uh, Fanatic? Yes, he can. Can he wound him? No, he can't. But he puts him back and stuns him. But he puts him back. So he doesn't stun him, of course, because I was defending. But now I have the initiative. So, and he wins again. God, uh, well done, Old Helm. Uh, he gets the armor. So I shouldn't have rolled the armor in the last exchange. Can he wound him? No, but this time he stuns him. Okay. So now we'll be rolling. And the, what's his face, will be rolling, the Fnatic will be rolling two white dice and picking the weakest of them. So here we go. Uh, so I didn't it didn't matter because I got a six and a two and a three on a white. So old helm is an old hand at this fighting business. He beats the armor again. Can I take him down? No, I haven't taken him down. So it's another stun, but stuns disappear at the end of the exchange. Anyway, so um, that was pretty good, old helm. You certainly held your own. Fantastic. Run off, the slinger has moved up here. He's going to try shooting across at uh, the guy over there. He needs a six because there's cover blocking lots of stuff and it's more than six inches away. He doesn't manage to hit him with a sling. So Silas then will move up and he does get to defend the obstacle, this um, uh, fanatic. So on a four plus he gets the advantage. No, he doesn't. So I'm still rolling advantage. Again, I'm on the black dice for Silas. No combat modifiers here. These guys are just basic. Uh, I got a 1, he got a 2, so he defeats me, but in the first exchange all that does is it gives him the initiative. Uh, so he's now hitting at me. Second exchange, he got a 1, I got a 3, so I regain the initiative. And in the final exchange, oh, I actually laid a hit on him. So a 4, did it beat his armour? Yes it does, his armour was 1. Can I beat his... no I can't. So I've stunned him because he has a toughness of 4. No modifiers for a normal basic weapon like I have. So that's it. It just pushes him off an inch, actually. Should have pushed him off an inch. So that's that. Uh, my heroes aren't going to do much at all. These guys are just going to move forward. So they're going to move um, four inches and then dash an inch. So they're basically just moving up to there. Capturing the camp very bravely. Very brave, Sir Robin. Uh, old Helm is going to move in here. Now I get the advantage, come on, see if you can do what you did before, no, so it's a hit against Old Helm, so that means that uh, it will be the attacker now will be, um, the initiative, sorry, will be with the uh, Fnatic, so roll a second time, oh, he lays a hit on Old Helm, oh, Old Helm, oh, I need to check if he has any armour, one second. Thankfully, he has armor, so he's pushed back and stunned. He has an armor, militia armor, which gives him an armor of one. Now, by being stunned, I'm rolling two dice, of course, and choosing the weakest of the two. So the final exchange is the weakest of the two is still better than the Fnatic's dice roll, which is great. So I win the combat, but I don't do any damage because I was the defender. Right. The Suckling has now moved in as well to support Old Helm. Um, the Suckling, so this is a multiple combat now, so it'll be a minus one for the Fnatic. So Black Dice for the Suckling. Oh, big hit from the Suckling. So he hits him. He's the attacker, obviously, so he can potentially damage him. That's cocked. Anything but a one. He does get through his armor. Can I defeat his toughness? No, so he is stunned, which means there'll be two white dice now and picking the weaker of the two. So the second exchange, the suckling still has the initiative. Uh, it's a five and a modified zero and one, actually. So again, I have hit. Can I beat the armor? Yes, I can. Can I beat the toughness? Uh, yes, the suckling. You may be a small young child, but you have killed your first enemy. Fantastic. Well done, the suckling. And at the end of that round, having lost three models in round three, um, as you would have thought, uh, there's two failures on the morale test, so the final fanatic runs for the hills. And 
The Brotherhood of the Blade is left in possession of the enemy camp, and they have successfully cleared this camp of the dark secrets threat with these fanatics, and that will have some uh, effect on helping Harmstadt to be a more safe part of the land. I've realized I made a mistake earlier. Fanatics don't roll morale dice. So, um, that had an effect on that wounded one earlier on. Probably wouldn't have had a major effect on the game. So obviously this last one here is not going to run. That was a mistake, so sorry about that. We will go into round four, and hopefully I can swarm him. So for quick uh, phase, I got four dice. That would allow me an agility advantage. So I'm going to do it like this so that I can get all these guys in supporting Silas. Silas will do the fighting. But the reason for that is that to count as supporting someone in a combat, you need to be within two inches. And I think they can all get within two inches, even though they're heavily armored and so on. So we will do that and then hopefully take down this last fanatic. Actually, it didn't work out quite as well as I hoped because there's only a Laric who's within two inches of the uh, combat and you count it as the opponent. So in this case, it's the fanatic. So it's going to be a minus one to that. So um, Silas is rolling on the black dice, white dice for the fanatic. So that actually goes effectively to a five and versus three. So it's a hit for Silas. Can he beat the armor? No, he can't beat the armor. It is just deflected. We do a second round, just the same as before, so uh, that goes down to one, that's a draw, so nothing happens there. In the case of an exchange where there's a draw, the defender retreats one inch and the melee ends. Darn it! Missed my chance. Okay, so it would make sense, he has a bow, so he would try and shoot someone, so he's going to try and shoot Silas, as the person's right in front of him. He hits on a three at that range, he hits him, uh, Silas has... No armor, so that's a hit on him, and his toughness is three. Ah, Silas is downed! Oh, I was doing so well. So Silas is... Oh, no, he's not down, sorry. Uh, it's... I'll come back in a second. Yes, he's actually wounded, because it was a three, which is equal to Silas's toughness. So Silas is not taken out. Okay, right. So now I do my slow actions. Well, I will do a couple of inches with... Ran off down here, you can just about squeeze through a shot. It's going to need a six though. Nope, no hit with him. And uh, the rest of my guys are going to end up just moving because they're all the way over there, so they'll just come forwards as much as they can. At the start of round five, the quick reactions, I got um, four quick reactions. So uh, Tian, Ar Alaric, John, and ran off. I'm going to give the quick reactions to. Um, I did roll at the end of the last round on a one. Silas's wound would have kicked in and made him pass out as a casualty. So uh, that didn't happen. I'm not going to risk him anymore. I'm going to leave him as he is. I think the other guys can deal with this uh, last fanatic. So we'll start with uh, ran off. Again, he has a six chance to shoot. No, nope, failed to shoot. It's a bit of a long shot, but it's okay. Um, we will go in with John of Granville first, because he is our hero. So um, he is going to do a standard fight. It's a one and a one, but I am the attacker and I have combat one, so I end up winning that. Can I defeat the armor of this fanatic, which is only one? Yes, I can. Can I defeat his toughness, which would normally be a four, down to a three, though, because of my bastard sword? Yes! and doesn't need the other guys, John of Granville takes off yet another fanatic, and that is the end of the game. So because this is a sort of role-playing game, um, the end of the mission isn't the end of the story, so we uh, then roll for loot, so I managed to find a uh, a fine basic weapon, 11 gold marks, and a tonic in one of the tents. I also found uh, a battered piece of basic weaponry, which I could potentially fix or then sell or use. 
Um, you then roll to see if you reduce the threat to the town. And despite attacking a camp, I only needed a 3 plus to reduce the threat, and I failed to do so. So the threat, unfortunately, to Harmstadt remains the same. I will have to do better next time to um, make it a safe town. You then gain experience, so um, all the heroes gain two experience because they survived and they took part in a battle. So it takes Trion up to three experience. I need four though to start uh, improving things like stats, for instance. Um, uh, Big John is also up to three experience because he took down the leader. Um, and then followers have a slightly different way of being promoted. So it's a random roll. And amazingly, um, three of my followers uh, gain something. So Silas the Strange, at the back there in the yellow hood with the flail, he has been promoted to a hero. So by leaping forwards, he's drawn the attention of Theon, and he's actually been promoted to a hero and gained plus two to his speed. He now has a speed of six, which is actually quite fast, as fast as any of my guys by a long way. Um, I also gain skills for Ranulf, the Slinger. He now has a skill of packing. He can pack things very well. Not the most useful, but it means I can take more stuff with me, I guess. Um, and Old Helm, he gained the skill of crafting. So he is able to sort of make things more easily, for instance. Uh, and along with Kieran the Suckling Kid having pathfinding as a skill, it means that all my followers have skills and I now have five heroes. So anyway, that's the end of this uh, mission. The Brotherhood of the Blade are victorious. They haven't been able to reduce the threat to Harmstadt um, in the Darkling Vale of the Hinterlands. But maybe next time I will have more luck. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Please check out... Uh, well, I'll say please. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, check out this game. I think it's uh, got a lot of potential. There's a few slightly fiddly bits, particularly when you're on a PDF, which I'm not a massive fan of playing from PDFs. But um, I think it's very, very good. Uh, I like, I quite like the combat thing with a multiple exchange. It actually, took a bit of getting used to, but I actually really quite like that. Um, yeah, I think I'll be playing more of this for sure. Um, please check out the other Way to Fire videos, including other uh, games from Nordic Weasel and. Please check out the Way to Fire Facebook page, Way to Fire Hobby Hangout Facebook page, where I post up all the videos first, and you can see what people have been working on. And then uh, listen out for the Way to Fire podcast, and please like, comment, and subscribe, because obviously that gives us the enthusiasm to keep coming back with more content. So thanks very much, everyone. Take care, and bye.